So our ester from the reaction of our unknown alcohol and acetic acid has been sitting in the fridge. And unfortunately it had a little bit of a mishap while it was in there. Because the centrifuge tube got caught on this uh, lip when I was inspecting one of the other reactions and it jumped. So it's broken and some of the ester is on the floor there. But I was able to retrieve most of it and transfer it to the three mil conical vial, which was going to be the next step anyway. So we'll take these back with us and let this warm up. And I had this sitting next to it, so I didn't put a separate label on. So we know what it was. So we're going to be setting up a distillation to purify the ester, get it away from any of the residual acetic acid and uh, alcohol that might be in there. Mostly alcohol, because we quench the acetic acid. So I'm going to want to add a couple of boiling stones to that, and then I want to set that up with a Hickman still, which is used for distilling small quantities of liquid. So grab one that looks like it's got a fairly short neck. You see they come in kind of short neck and long neck. And if we use the one with the shorter neck, we don't have to heat the pot quite as hot. It should have a cap with a Teflon seal on the sidearm so we don't lose any through the sidearm. Those come in a couple of different configurations. I like the fit of that white one a little better. So we'll use that one. So we've got our Hickman still, and we're going to need a condenser on the top of that. And then we'll use the O-rings and assembly. That one looks pretty clean. And we need a thermometer and a number three split stopper. We can't use a thermometer adapter on the top because then that would be heating a closed system. So we're going to sit this on top. And we're going to put a thermometer in there so we can measure the temperature of the distilling ester, or at least get an approximate measurement. I want to make sure this actually fits through here before I commit to using this. The thermometer is going to need to sit so the bulb is right there, the top of the bulb right at the kind of lip, so we're actually measuring the temperature of what's distilling over. So it looks like it will fit. So, and then I'll just put that stopper on there. The split stopper prevents you from twisting the thermometer in half and cutting yourself when you're inserting it. And I don't know where it'll distill, um, but I think it'd probably be below 200. Um, but I'll, I'll put that so I can actually see through the stopper, just in case it distills at exactly the temperature that puts it in the middle of the stopper. So we're going to need a couple of these, one to connect the condenser to the Hickman still, and one to connect the Hickman still to the unit. While I'm in here, there are several of the older ones that came with a different kit. I'm going to get rid of those. And replace them with the newer ones that came with that kit. So they're all matching up. Different companies made this. This one is the Ace Glass symbol, or sorry, the Conti's Glass uh, symbol, but there's also an Ace Glass, and they're very slightly different. couple of o-rings. You can see the o-rings are also very slightly different sizes depending on which kit they came with. So usually o-rings purpose is to prevent the... So I'm going to angle that so those are pointing back so that if it comes off it sprays the back of the hood and not me and this is on the right so it's easy to get into with a pipette.
make sure that's pushed on there. And that'll attach to the three mil aisle. Grab a stirring hot plate and a heat block and some auxiliary heat blocks. We'll use to heat it. Actually, be clamping the condenser so that everything below it hangs nicely. And we're going to wrap the kind of top of the vial with some glass wool and foil to make sure that it stays hot everywhere below the vial. You'll see that some of the drying agent was still left in that centrifuge tube after the breakage. And it still smells a little bit like banana inside that tube. So we'll dump that into the solid waste. need to take the label off because it's garbage. So that should be warm up enough close to room temperature that I can put some boiling stones in there without introducing moisture. Take that cap off. fruity smelling ester. And I'm going to add two boiling stones. And then we will attach this to our assembly. Clamp that about in the center of the condenser. I mean, this four, so it's going to be easy for me to get at. thermometer needs to sit right there. So I'll move that stopper down a little bit. So the bulb is going to be bathed in the vapors. We want the top of the thermometer bulb right at the top of the lip in the Hickman still. And we've got our assembly. But we don't actually want to start distilling until after we've reached the appropriate temperature on the hot block. I'm also going to want to measure the temperature of the block. So I'm going to move that hole so I can fit another thermometer in there. Second thermometer. And now tubing. And that shitty black piece always wants to come out. We 
need to move this over closer because these pieces of tubing are pretty short. Need to get that nice and close to the sink. Twisted on solid. If I twist that on there just right, I can get that hose to fall out of the way so it doesn't contact the hot surface. And then we'll put our little weight. some water pressure. Get a nice flow rate. Not too vigorous, so we don't want the hoses popping off, but enough to keep it cold. Now we're going to turn that on, and we want that hot block to be at about 180 degrees. So I'm going to turn this up to halfway between 200 and 250. Try to get that up to temperature fairly quickly. And in the meantime, I'm just going to scoot that out because we don't really want to heat it prematurely and risk dehydration reactions or other side reactions. We want it to distill pretty quickly once it distills. So I'm going to stick a thermometer in that block. So it's just behind the that block over while I can so it's just behind the clamp so it's safe I'm going to store the distilled ester in a fresh clean disposable vial I think the right size will be this one so one dram, four milliliter vial. And we will put a label on that. This is going to be 50B, it looks like. Your numbers will vary. Oh, the purified ester. 50A was the impure stuff. label on and get a mass on this vial. So it looks like we're at 6.038 grams once that's stabilized. 6.038 grams for our vial it's going to have our purified ester added to it. Yeah, we need a pipette, and I have two sitting over here. These are clean. This will be our transfer pipette for pulling it out of that lip. So what's going to happen is it's going to distill, collect on the condenser and the walls of this, and then collect in that little well here. And as that fills, we'll reach in the sidearm and empty it so that there's more room, because there's more volume in here that's going to distill, and that well will collect. So 
the temperature's up at 80. It's gonna take a little while to get there. I'm gonna actually crank it up all the way to 300 until it reaches a temperature of about 150, and then I'll back it off a little bit. These guys still smell like banana. This one doesn't, it's clean. I can put that away. There are a lot more centrifuge tube caps than there are centrifuge tubes in this lab. Because we're pretty good at breaking them. pretty close to colorless, which is good. The residue that remains in there will not be colorless. That is likely to go fairly dark. And we're then going to characterize this ester by IR, and then when the NMR is working again, we'll get proton carbon and the attached proton test, or the DEPT, Distortionless Enhancement by Polarization Transfer Spectrum. That's the one that flips the carbons attached to two hydrogens upside down, and the quaternary carbons, any quaternary carbons that would be present, like a carbonyl group, will disappear in the DEPT spectrum. So if we have a quaternary carbon in our alcohol, there'll be a second peak that disappears in addition to the carbonyl. So it's up around 125, it's rising pretty quickly now. keep the temperature of the block significantly above the likely boiling point of the ester so it boils up quickly. And then we'll look at the temperature inside to give us an idea where the ester boils and it's likely probably to boil somewhere.